Okay, welcome back. Good afternoon. And uh, before I start with the or continue with the lecture, just one or two things which I want to clarify. So, one of our colleagues pointed out that I used V is equal to R cross omega, but it should be omega pro cross R. So, okay, I uh, so that was a typo. So, please note that V bar will be omega cross R in this scenario. Okay, so that will change the sign. Okay, so that was my typo. Please take a note of that. And also, another thing is that that because my zeal because I wanted to go into the details of virtual work and how does the mechanism happen. Okay? So, I went into onto a tangent, but I realized that that may have confused some of you regarding that how do we find out what is the rotation of this and what is the corresponding uh, displacement. So, let me quickly outline the process. So, what we realize is that that this crank A B is rotating in the clockwise direction. So, with respect to this uh, point A which is stationary, velocity of B is nothing but omega cross R which is given in this direction, the magnitude will be omega into 75. So, we know what is the magnitude of this velocity. Now, let us look at this. Okay? Let us look at this mechanism. What is happening is that from the point of view of rod BD, we need to find out what first of all, what is this angle BD. To do that, we know, realize that AB sin 4t should be the same as BD sin beta. So, we just put this in the equation. Solving this equation, getting a reverse of sin beta, we will see that beta is approximately 14 degrees. Now, this entire motion of rod BD, it is not a pure translation, neither is it rotation about a point. So, what do we do is that we use a very simple concept that we had discussed before that this motion, we break it down into two parts. One is translation okay, along the direction of B with a velocity B plus fixed point B okay, and rotate this uh, uh, with an uh, unknown angular velocity. We do not know what that unknown angular velocity is okay, such that, okay, that uh, the velocity at point D with respect to B will be nothing but this omega cross uh, uh, omega cross L or the magnitude will be L into omega B D. Now, the idea is that what we want to figure out okay, that what are these appropriate magnitudes. Now, let us we, we know that the velocity of point D has to be in the horizontal direction. We know that this velocity also has to be in this direction because it is known to us this angle this is V A B. So, this angle has to be 50 degrees. This is V D which is unknown to us. This magnitude is also unknown to us. But what we know is that, that this angle is 76.05 degrees. Why? Because we saw in the previous slide that beta was 14 degrees and since beta was 14 degrees, this has to be 76.05, 90 minus that. So, this angle we know what does the relative velocity V of D with respect to B makes with respect to the horizontal is 76.05 and now we know this magnitude, we know all the angles. So, we can simply use sign rule. We know that V D divided by this angle, sum of all the angles is 180 degrees. So, we know this angle should be equal to V D B divided by sin 50. This is the angle sin 50 is equal to okay, uh, 15705 divided by sin 7605. So, this is the velocity or this is the speed that we had obtained from the previous step. So, now we know all the velocity, uh, we know the velocity here, we know all the angles. So, we just use simple sign rule and from that we can figure out what is V of D which will come out to be 13.08 meter per second and V of D B, okay, this will again come out to be 1, uh, 12396 millimeter per second. But we also know that V of D B is equal to length uh, this arm B D multiplied, uh, multiplied by omega B D. So, we divide V uh, by L and from that we can find out what is the omega for this and omega is anticlockwise and the magnitude comes from this simple relation. Okay? So, this discussion I think it is much more easier to discuss okay? and as simple as that okay, to find out what is the uh, uh, rotation and what is the relative sliding of uh, what is the sliding of point D. Now, let us move on to this very interesting concept which is the instantaneous center of rotation in plane motion. Now, recall. Okay, Recall that if we have just a sphere like this, a, a circle like this, which is rotating about point O, which we say is the centroid, for example, or this is pinned about the bottom, okay, point P at the bottom, and there is a rotation. What is the rotation? The rotation is about point, po, uh, point P, which is pure 
rotation about p okay now note one thing that most of the motions that we had seen especially uh, for the ladder and also for the last uh, crank and uh, arm problem the crank and the piston problem we saw that the motion in general is not a simple translation or a simple fixed rotation about a point but it's a combination but there is this interesting concept that we can figure out what is called as the instantaneous center of rotation and what is this instantaneous rotation so center of rotation is that that the velocities okay that when the body is moving each and every point has a velocity now we had seen that when each and every point has some velocity v bar we had seen that if the rotation is a pure if the if the if the motion is a pure rotation then v bar is equal to omega bar okay for point a cross r bar a okay where it's a rotation about point o here and this r a is nothing but a position vector of point a and we know that the velocity is omega uh, cross r a and what is the direction the direction is perpendicular to this you look at any point the direction will be perpendicular to this the direction will be perpendicular to this now think about it if i uh, take the velocity direction here draw a perpendicular okay let us take the case of pure rotation let us take two points here so this is the there is a pure rotation of this body about point o this is r bar a this is r bar b for point b note that because it's a pure rotation this is the velocity direction which is perpendicular to the uh, the radius vector this is the velocity vector which is perpendicular okay to the radius vector now note one thing if i know the directions of the velocity vectors okay this is the direction of the velocity vector what happens if i draw a normal to it if i draw a normal to the velocity i will get this one line if i draw a normal to this second velocity vector of point b i will get another line and this two will intersect at point o about which the rotation was happening now we extend this similar concept that even though the body is not undergoing pure translation or pure rotation okay it's a combination of rotation and translation what we say is that that there will exist one point okay there will exist one point such that you draw a perpendicular okay that at point a suppose this is velocity you draw a perpendicular to that then this distance times omega okay is nothing but the instantaneous velocity at point a and this center c then is called as the instantaneous center of rotation similarly if i want to find out that if there is another point b here we join this c with b and ask ourselves okay that what is the instantaneous velocity or the velocity at that time for point b what do we do this is the length multiplied by omega will be the magnitude and what is the direction it will be omega cross r so this will be the corresponding direction of velocity at point b now this particular point okay which may keep shifting for example if you have a rolling cylinder okay the cylinder rolls without slip this is point a after some time the cylinder will roll point a will go here and this will be point b in this case you say that point a will be instantaneous center of rotation why because this point a is stationary okay this point a is stationary it has no velocity in any rotational motion the point about which the rotation happens is stationary so that this criteria is satisfied and you will see that if you want to find out velocity at any point you just join here multiplied by omega okay this will be the direction and this will be the magnitude so this is the instantaneous point and this point can keep shifting for example this a will go here after some time and will be replaced by b okay so this is the concept of instantaneous center of rotation now we ask ourselves that if we know some velocity patterns can we find out what is the instantaneous center of rotation now let us say for this rigid body at two points a and b we know that this is the velocity at a both the direction and the magnitude at point b we know the velocity both the magnitude and the direction now we say okay let us drop a perpendicular to this okay it will be a line let us drop another perpendicular from this line to other line they have to intersect if they are not parallel at point c now when they intersect at point c what we realize is that that the overall velocity at point b okay will be nothing but this distance cb multiplied by omega velocity of point a is nothing but this distance multiplied by omega 
in this direction or if you want to think about it it is omega cross this position vector or omega cross this position vector and this point c will be instantaneously stationary okay which means that it is as if this entire object is rotating about point c what does that mean that velocity at any point on this object is nothing but you join this call that as r cross omega is the velocity of any point and we just did a back calculation to find out what is that point so if in your rigid body if you can find out two points who have different directions of velocity then the instantaneous center of rotation is immediately determined without even bothering about the magnitude just draw a perpendicular just draw a perpendicular this point is the instantaneous center of rotation now a case where if those two points have velocity in the same direction then the way to find the instantaneous center of rotation is that draw this arrow of the magnitude draw this arrow of the magnitude draw a perpendicular line to both a and b and outside the outside tip of point a or point b just join here that will be the center of rotation what is the justification the justification is that that look at this that the magnitude okay the magnitude of the velocity is proportional to the momentum and so these two are similar triangles so this by this will be nothing but this length divided by this length and that is our justification in saying that this c is the instantaneous center of rotation take any other point okay take any other point and you will see that the velocity at that point will be nothing but that position vector cross uh, the, uh, the omega cross that position vector or it will be this magnitude multiplied by omega direction will be perpendicular to the line line joining it okay so that in simple words is the instantaneous center of rotation now let us look about this thing how do we figure out that if the velocity at this point a is given then what is the corresponding velocity at point b we know one thing we know that the direction of velocity at point a has to be this the direction of velocity at this point has to be vertical so we just draw a line perpendicular to this velocity draw a line perpendicular to this velocity both will intersect at point c and that will be our instantaneous center of rotation now if i ask you that at that instant when the system is in this configuration this is velocity va okay what will be velocity vb and what will be omega so the answer is really straight forward what you realize is that that because this is the instantaneous center of rotation if va is like this the only way you can have va in this direction at point a is that if this rod has instantaneously an anti clockwise rotation about point b how much anti clockwise rotation omega such that omega times this distance ca should be equal to v of a so then we immediately can find out if geometrically we can locate this point c then we immediately know what is the corresponding omega now similarly we go to point b we need to find out what is the velocity of point b we found out omega from this first step then what we do we recognize what is this distance bc bc will be nothing but l sin theta and what is the velocity here the velocity here is that the magnitude will be omega times bc what will be the direction look at this this is acting in the anti clockwise direction so the velocity need to have a downward direction so by finding out what is the instantaneous center of rotation okay we can immediately figure out what is the motion of any part of the body and we can immediately even figure out what is the corresponding rotation and note that rotation will remain constant okay if you take rotation about b a or c the magnitude omega will never change but what will change okay is with respect to point b if the rotation was happening with respect to point b what is the relative velocity of a with respect to b or if we model the problem like we did previously sum of velocity at point a plus relative velocity of b at point b uh, b with respect to a uh, is the total velocity at point b okay so then in that case the rotation happens at this point and the relative velocity changes but omega always remains the same and with this instantaneous uh, instantaneous center of rotation concept you can easily find out okay for example even what is the velocity at the center so what do we do we just join this line draw a perpendicular to that that is a direction magnitude is how much omega times that distance straight away so using this is a very useful concept and we will see how this concept can be very gainfully used for the problem we had discussed previously what we realize is what is the velocity direction of point uh, b because link ab has pure rotation about a b has a direction which is in this direction the rotation is clockwise so b has a direction perpendicular to this here magnitude is 75 times omega what is the velocity at point d we don't know the magnitude but we know the direction the direction has to be along this then what do we do we try to locate what is the instantaneous center of rotation how do we do that to this line we draw a perpendicular let it go to this 
horizontal line, we draw another perpendicular. These two lines will intersect at point C and this C will be the instantaneous center of rotation. Now the question is, how do we find out, okay, that we found out the instantaneous rotation geometrically, but what are the corresponding magnitudes? What is length CD? What is length CB? And what we recognize is that, that the angle, this angle beta from our previous calculation was 13.95 close to 14. And now we note one thing is this, that this angle was 40 to begin with, this was 13.95. So in an absolute sense, this angle DBC is equal to 40 plus 13.5, 53.95. Look at this angle. How much is this angle? BDC will be nothing but 90 minus 13.95, which will be 76.05. This angle is given. So now what do we know for this triangle? We know this angle, this angle, and this angle, and one side. So simply use sign rule, and then what we get? We get what is BC, we get what is CD. Okay? But we also know that this length is given to us, which is 200. This angle is given to us. We immediately find out what is BC. We immediately find out what is CD, and then what? We know that BC, okay, what should be the omega, okay, because omega times BC is the velocity of point B. But we already know from previous calculation that uh, the omega of rod AB multiplied by distance AB was the corresponding velocity. So we just equate them and from that find out what is uh, omega for this rod. And once we get the omega for this rod, which find just from this calculation, what do we do? CD multiplied by omega. Note here that if the omega here is clockwise, for it to get the same velocity for instantaneous rotation of this rod BD about the instantaneous center of rotation C, the velocity need to have, the angular velocity needs to have a direction which is in the counterclockwise direction. Because if this is clockwise, you will get velocity like this. About this center, if the velocity has to be like this, okay, it will be BC into a clockwise direction omega. Okay, so we immediately see from instantaneous center of rotation that if this is clockwise, this has to be anti-clockwise. Similarly, if this omega is known clockwise, uh, sorry, anti-clockwise, then what do we see? That CD times omega is the velocity in this direction. Uh, at point D, it will be outwards because the velocity is in the, uh, the angular velocity is in the anti-clockwise direction times CD and we are done. Because omega we found out from the previous calculation, CD we got from the geometry, we immediately could find out what is the velocity of point D. So this is the concept of center of rotation and this is how we can use it.